On today's show, automakers are wasting billions on in-car technology, Honda introduces a new crossover, and Ford is resurrecting the Ranger in North America. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for August 26th of 2015. Ever since it entered service in 1983, the Humvee became an iconic military vehicle recognized the world over. But it was never designed to deal with RPGs and IEDs, and the Humvee has outlived its usefulness. That's why the U.S. Army just awarded a $30 billion deal to Oshkosh to build a next-generation replacement called the JLTV, or Joint Light Tactical Vehicle. Oshkosh beat out Lockheed Martin in AM General, which makes the current Humvee. The JLTV could be in production until 2040, with 55,000 vehicles being built. That would translate into a total cost of $545,000 per vehicle. Oshkosh says the JLTV is, and I quote here, proven to provide the ballistic protection of a light tank, the underbody protection of an MRAP class vehicle, and the off-road mobility of a Baja racer. It's powered by a Banks 866T V8 diesel engine based on Duramax architecture. Automakers are loading cars up with all sorts of new technologies these days. But do consumers actually want those gizmos? Not according to a new survey from J.D. Power. In its 2015 Drive report, researchers found that at least 20% of owners never used half of the technologies that were measured. The five most common never used features were in-vehicle concierge, mobile routers, automatic parking systems, head-up display, and built-in apps. J.D. Power also found that a number of customers don't want Android Auto or Apple CarPlay or in-vehicle voice texting in their next vehicle. That's because most owners prefer using their smartphone or tablet. The report says more can be done at dealerships to explain the technologies, but the bottom line is automakers are spending billions on features customers don't have any interest in using. Well, you've heard of the CRV and the HRV, but how about the BRV? We'll be back with more right after this. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion, Dow Automotive Systems, Breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles. Hyundai. Learn more at Hyundai.com. And by Pure Michigan. Leading the automotive world in intelligent connected vehicles. We run on brain power. Earlier this year, Ford announced its pulling Focus and C-Max production out of its Michigan assembly plant. It was speculated that the company would build its small global CUV, the EcoSport, at the plant but it's being reported that the company will start manufacturing the Ranger there in 2018. The return of the pickup, which the company stopped making in North America in 2011, is part of the company's negotiations with the UAW. Ford currently sells a different version globally, which is actually smaller than the Chevy Colorado. The Global Ranger is an inch shorter in length and two inches in width than GM's pickup. Honda already makes the CRV and the HRV, and now it's adding another V to its lineup. Meet the BRV that just debuted at the Indonesian Auto Show. Like some of its other recent reveals, Honda has injected some more energetic styling into the BRV with multiple long swooping lines down the side and large C-shaped wedges in the lower front fascia. The seven passenger CUV is powered by a 1.5 liter engine that can be mated to either a new six speed manual transmission or a CVT. The BRV will hit the Indonesian market in early 2016, then followed by other countries, but it hasn't said which ones yet. Speaking of Honda and auto shows, the automaker will have a new concept to show off in Frankfurt that was jointly developed by its motorcycle and automobile design teams in Japan. Here's an image Honda released of what it's calling Project 2 and 4. And if you're like us, you're not quite sure what the hell you're looking at. We think it could be half of the vehicle from an overhead view. But Honda says the cabinless structure will have the freedom of a motorcycle with the maneuverability of a car and will be powered by a modified version 
of its RC213V race bike. It's going to be interesting to see what gets revealed. Coming up next, John is back to answer your letters and comments, and you said it. Why Tucson? There's the 17-inch alloy wheels, a panoramic sunroof, and the rear view camera. And if that's not enough reasons, the touchscreen nav can help you find a few more. The Hyundai Tucson. There's more car news and industry insight from the AutoLine Network every day. Take a moment to click that subscribe button. You'll never miss another AutoLine episode. And now it's time for some of your feedback. In the aftermath of the terrible accident that cost Justin Wilson his life in last Sunday's IndyCar race, we sure got a great response about whether or not open cockpit race cars should offer more protection for the driver. Family Guy said, given today's available tech, perhaps open cockpit racers should have sensor-controlled instant partial or full enclosure to deflect incoming debris. You know, that's an interesting idea. Automakers have looked at sensors that would trigger airbag deployments nanoseconds before any collision takes place. So it's a proactive, not reactive system. Thanks for that suggestion. HTG wrote in to say, For all the structure built up around the drivers today, we already cannot see the drivers. The addition of a thick debris shield open at the top for cooling and escape would seem simple. Maybe it's more complicated, though. Well, it sure sounds simple enough to me, too. You'd think that a tall but aerodynamic windshield could do the trick. But Lisk reminds us that it isn't as easy as it sounds. There are so many cons to the closed cockpit, such as visibility, ventilation, extraction, and fire. I don't think the current cars could have a canopy scabbed on. I think this would have to be involved in the design and engineering process. And yeah, you're right. It would have to be designed in from the very beginning. Marshall says, I'm all for the safety of a closed cockpit. All you see now anyway is a helmet bobbing around in the car. A closed cockpit would also, I believe, help to reduce driver fatigue. Bob D has an interesting solution. It would seem like a thin, longitudinal, tapered fin could be added in front of the cockpit that could deflect debris and encroachment without interfering with the driver's visibility and is another place to promote sponsors. And <laughs> I like that kind of out-of-the-box thinking. GM Veteran points out that there's another sport which already dealt with this problem. Perhaps F1 should visit with the folks behind the technologies used in unlimited hydroplane racing. They have used fighter jet style cockpit covers for more than a decade, prompted by driver injuries. Very similar to auto racing and with many of the same risks. They may also have some answers to the good points raised here. Boy, that's a superb suggestion. And I wish we could answer all your letters and comments because there were a lot more of them. But with that, we're going to have to wrap up today's report. Thanks for watching and please join us again tomorrow.